idea that, that uh, you know, when it comes to animation, it's a different kind of muscle from an actor's point of view of just knowing that you're not actually going to be on screen. So I don't know whether that, that becomes just great, a great joy to, to do it or whether it's some sort of existential well, I don't, nightmare. I don't have to bring my own makeup anymore, so that's ah, good. Ah, nice, nice. Um, <laughs> I know, it was kind of, um, what I liked about it was kind of less kind of stressful. You know, you just said your words and then um, try to get, put as much expression into them as possible and you didn't have to worry about anything like continuity or what you were wearing, uncomfortable 90s clothing, like, um, so it was, it was great. Um, 90s clothing, I'll have you know that was the fashion <laughs> in my <laughs> Would there have been much of a, a kind of a guideline as to this is who you are and this is where you're coming from? You know, the way for actors, because you're very deep people and you go into huge depths of, of understanding, yeah. but I don't know whether there was something in your mind that you had a picture of this kid and when you thought, well, this is the kind of voice I need to do, this is the kind of kid he is, or whether this is 90% uh, Dave? I, I suppose it, it was kind of just for the scenes, mainly like what kind of, what he would be feeling in that scene. Like just kind of, let's say he is just a normal boy, so, you know, kind of that kind of thing. And what would he be feeling in this scene? And what would he be thinking in this scene? And, you know, how could you kind of express that? And just kind of uh, different things like that. Um, so kind of maybe not just as the whole, you know, different person, you know, but just kind of incorporate a bit of yourself as well into it, uh, which was kind of good. And they didn't say, now could you do it a, a completely different than that, you know? Um, so Faster, with more feeling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm thinking for you, Tom, I know that, that your, your girlfriend's uh, primary school kids, you, you kind of use them as your test audience regularly yeah. to kind of get an idea of how uh, a scene was playing. And, and I don't know whether you, you, you kind of took a lot on board with them or whether it was just a sort of a sense of, well, you know, just to see where they laugh and where they kind of go with the yeah, story. Yeah, and... some so it depended. Uh, like, my wife was working in that primary school for four years while we were developing the thing. So uh -huh. we kind of showed them a very early draft and we had to take on board the fact that, you know, they were enjoying watching it mainly because they weren't having to do their maths or, you know, <laughs> it wasn't like a choice between this and SpongeBob, you know, it was a choice between this and maths. So you have to take into consideration that there's already a positive bias there. But no, but the feedback was really useful. And as the film shaped up, and it became more complete, we were able to really get down to nuances and we took some lines out that maybe felt a bit too heavy or that the kids reacted to. And yeah, we were able to really uh, carve out the, the film based on that feedback. Of course, good old uh, Pixar, the sort of the Beatles of, uh, of animation for the last you know, two decades, uh, their, their belief is that you, know, you spend a huge amount of time getting your script right and you, you, know, you don't leave that shed until you're all kind of mm. smiling about what you've got mm. uh, ready to roll. But then they're also famous for the fact that they will just completely scrap Me what they've too, had for yeah. like a year and, and just rewrite it on, on, a, on a belief that they're in the wrong path. Is that, is that, is that must be, to turn a ship, uh, so the yeah. animation thing is a big, big deal. Yeah. And is that, is that a constant sort of niggling possibility with you or, or do you feel you always have to, because of the budget restraints, well, you have to start with your... Yeah, our budget is like, we have a long, long pre-production time because we're raising the finance and it's a tiny little group of us making the storyboards and designs. And then once you hit production, you don't really, you can trim and you can rearrange, but you can't completely retool it, you know? So we kind of pre-edit the whole film. So we take the first part of what Pixar did. We don't have the luxury of the other, you know, <laughs> like rewriting it and at the weekend before it's going to be released or something. <laughs> we don't saw, have that. I saw this documentary on like, and they were, they were, it was like before they finished Toy Story and they showed it to like Roy Disney and he was like this is terrible you know you gotta you gotta work on this and then they like worked on it for, they like didn't sweet sleep for two weeks and watched it again he was like this is the best thing I've ever seen you know and it became like the best you know the most popular thing ever. Um, I, I was wondering too with, 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 with regard to most movies should have a message and should sort of let the especially when it's aimed at the whole family and for young children that there should be some kind of positive message and I suppose the main message in this movie would be never to trust your granny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. what we wanted. We wanted exactly. to breed distrust of grandmothers. <laughs> yeah, it's and important. And granny does sort of do the Tato thing, and they seem like they're very sweet, but they're, they're vicious. <laughs> you know, all grannies are vicious. They're actually witches. Yeah. Now, you've had it, like the Oscar nomination, obviously you got seven Annie nominations. You won the Tokyo Anime and the Satellite Award. But I suppose the one that really matters the most in the entire world to everybody is the fact that you picked up the IFTA. <laughs> yes. How emotional were you when, when you realised that you'd won the, uh, what is it, most super duper Irish film of the year? I think that's the actual title. That's the, is it? Is that I great? It's pretty be. good. <laughs> we're going to get that. We're going to get a tattoo of that. Yeah. No, it was massive for us in the sense that we kind of showed up and we said, oh, well, this is the party, we'll have a few drinks, and maybe some of our shorts might win in the animation category. But you think if you're nominated alongside live action films, most people consider them real films. So the fact that we won, you know, along, there were some amazing films this year. It was just amazing that like, we were taken seriously as a, as a, 
Animation is a medium, not a genre. I always say that. And people yeah. always think that, oh, it's animation, it's a separate category. But no, we were up there with the rest of them, which is great. So oh, it's funny you that you didn't actually get nominated for the best animation. I kind of thought that. <laughs> I was like, like yeah. poor lads. And I was like, oh, well, they got for the best. No, so. it would have achieved me. We had two nominations, two shorts were nominated in, in the animation thing as well. So we were, did pretty well at the after. I presume you were quite cocky at the after party, too. I'm sure you kind of sauntered <laughs> about a bit and bumping shoulders and turning Would you hold my after? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but given the success, and now you're, 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 you've had obviously with both the Song of the Sea and, and Secret of Kells just a huge sort of impact already on the world of animation and you know you've friends of John Lasseter and Miyazaki and beautiful people from Pixar and all that but it must feel like a cuckoo in the nest because it seems such a strange phenomenon that a, a small three friends from Ballyfermot College decide to start a studio with as you said yourself actually when I spoke to you I think your, your main thing was uh, just about the, yeah, high hopes, stupidity, and luck was the main kind of business plan that you had. In, in. But it must, it must still feel like a, you're, a, you're a, a somewhat of a cuckoo, or, or now that you're that established as a field, but I'm, I'm part of this world now. No, no, it's still very surreal, and it does feel like it could go away any minute. Like it is, I'm still kind of yeah amazed that we're that we're uh, punching so far above our weight, you know. And, and very quickly, because I know my time's up, but this is probably a very generic question. But would there be just that one animation film, especially for you, Dave, that that would be some sort of cherished? Uh, kind of film that you would think, well, that's 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 me as a perfect. Uh, Secret of Kells. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it'd be embarrassed answering that question because yeah. it'd be like, what, what the, the Little Mermaid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. My Little Pony, <laughs> Friendship <laughs> is Magic. Well, the Care Bears, yeah. well, the Care Bears movie kind of robbed. I thought it was <laughs> way uh, before his time. But for you, Tom, would there be something that you would sort of see as a, a kind of a, a desert island disc when it comes to? A, yeah, well, I mean, I have so many. I'm a real animation nerd. But for this film, I was really uh, riffing on My Neighbor Totoro. I really right. loved that film. And, and I can go back to that one all the time and enjoy it again. So that was the kind of thing I was trying to do. 